I want to share with you from Revelation, but uh, Peter is just jumping in between. Uh, Peter in the Bible, not, not Peter Jones. Okay. One Peter two, verse nine. That you are a chosen people, a royal priest, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you, called you out of darkness into His marvelous, wonderful light. Oh, my brother, my sister, you've been called out for a purpose. Called out. Let's say, church. Called out. The word church, remember, is the Greek word ecclesia. And the ecclesia means the called out ones. So the word church has not, I don't want to say it, eternal meaning. But the purpose of the word church is to say, you've been called out of darkness. So if you want to be church, be church. And to live and to be church. I'm trying to be church. I'm trying to be church. What does that mean? I'm trying to understand how I've been called out, called out, called out of darkness. And daily, when darkness is drawing me back, when darkness is a place of safety, when darkness is a place where I can feel comfortable because in the light I can get hurt. In the light people could criticize me. People, let's use the example of the spotlight. You don't want to stand in front of people. Why? That fear of, what, I've, what if I've been laughed at? What if I'm not good enough? What if I cannot do what I'm supposed to do in the right way? Now, my brother, my sister, God is giving you a stage. And he's shining his light on you. Shining his light on you. Because he trusts you. His light is on you because he trusts you. He trusts what he has placed in you. Why? Because you are his special treasure, his holy priesthood. The church is a word to describe, to take you out into the place where you can be, where you can be, not the church, where you can be the royal priesthood, the holy nation, the special treasure. But church is the vehicle. It's like Getting into the car so that you can go to Joburg and the car, the, the vehicle is the church. You're driving, you're getting into a Ferrari. No, you're getting into a church. And being together is to encourage one another to be a body, a spiritual house, to encourage one another to go, to go, to go into that place. To shine as his special treasure. To shine and be the priests that will minister unto him. But the kings that will reign and rule with authority with Christ. Amen. Allow God to take you out of that place and ask Holy Spirit, Lord, show me, Holy Spirit, where is the darkness that I'm flirting with? How do you flirt with darkness? When I entertain an attitude, when I entertain the negativity, when I entertain the fear, when I entertain the rejection, when I entertain the, the inferiority, when I entertain the fight in my head or in my heart with people, I'm flirting with darkness. Let's say I will not flirt with darkness. Okay, because the opposite is I have a relationship with light. I'm not just walking in the light. I have an intimate relationship with light. So I can have an intimate relationship with darkness. But let's not flirt there because we are married to the light. You are the bride of the bridegroom and the bridegroom is called light. The light of the world. And he's putting his name on you. If we want to say, especially in this year with the year word, that we must see what he is saying. We must see what he is saying. Guys, then the light is key. 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 Only in the light we can see the light. Only in his light we can see the light. Psalm, what? 119, somewhere there, I think. And u lach sien ons die lach. So may God help you. That we will start like never before to have a relationship with light. That light will be, we will be attracted by light. 
because the flesh, the flesh and flirting with darkness is that, that's one thing. But I must clean up my flesh in such a way that later David says, my flesh cry out to the living God. Whoa, that's something bigger. That's something more. Then just deal with your flesh, deal with your flesh. Your flesh must be crucified. But somewhere you need to come into the place where even my flesh is crying out to the living God. May God help us to get there. I'm not there yet, but God's going to help us. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you better get there. It's the only time you can point the finger. You better get there. <laughs> okay. You are a, you are a, your identity, chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation, special possession. To declare, to declare, to declare. But you don't understand who you are, you will declare who you think you are. You will declare who you think you are. I am rejected. And then you will declare from a place of rejection. I am full of fear. And I'm so flirting with fear that when I speak, I will declare the fear. We need to do this. Guys, and we need to do this. And we need to do that. But you declare the praises of fear. You are declaring the honor of fear. That I honor the anxiety. I honor the fear. I honor the negativity. I honor the issue. And therefore, I will declare the issue. I will declare the criticism. I will declare my, my struggle. I need to deal with the struggle, definitely. I need to be honest. But I will not call that the truth. I will call that I need to be honest, but then I need to walk in truth. But too many times we are honest, not anymore in the future, in Jesus' name. Honest, but I'm just honest. I'm just sharing you my heart. Is there no truth in your heart? I'm just sharing you with my heart. I feel this, and I feel that, and I feel that, and I feel that, and I feel that. And now I feel better. Because I gave you a piece of my heart. Oh. Rotten. <laughs> okay. After you've packed out your heart, and you know you, now I've, Put it out there. Please allow the blood of Christ to sweep it off the table. And it's not clickety-click and everything is fine. No. But apply the truth. That will set this heart free. When I expose this heart and I put it out there and I was even angry. And I was this and I that, 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 that. And you feel actually ashamed in a certain sense. But you feel better because you unplugged the, the, the whatever, you know, the lid, the, open it up. Now you, psychologically, you can feel, it's not a stew pot. What is a stew pot? A pressure cooker. Anymore. You know, phew, yeah. Until it's full of rubbish again, because it's, it's very open, very open. You are still very welcome. Every form of rubbish, any form of offense that can be taken, please. I'm open for that. I'm open for any offense. I'm open to be hurt. Because I'm not open for the truth to just forgive and give grace. I'm declaring that I'm open for the rubbish. No, no pressure cooker anymore. <laughs> May God help us. But may you be fed up and full of fire like Jeremiah said. It's a fire shut up in my bones and it cannot shut up anymore. If I use it like that, it must come out. And it's the fire of God, the passion, the energy of God, the passion of God, the energy of God, the love driven by love, compelled by love. I need to get into that place. To be compelled, to be driven by love. Because too easily I can be driven by fear, driven by fed upness, driven by frustration, driven by negativity, driven by whatever I want to call it. But this is the end. Let's say this is the end. Before the end must come, I must declare another end. This is the end of this flesh. This is the end of this negativity. This is the end in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, stop it. <laughs> ah, okay. Even though it's your birthday, tell your neighbor, stop it. Okay, great.
God's going to help us. Amen. Amen. I'm giving you one verse, and I want you to get out to God about that. After this one, that was because of the worship. Um, you all know this. Revelation 3.20, part of David, part of what God said in this time. Behold. Some, uh, some translations, see. Or here I am. But the thing of... The, the context of behold, so an, give attention. You can write there, there's, there, there's seven points in this one verse. First point is see, you can write there see or behold. It's like, where's the pen and the paper? See, I will beat you up in love. <laughs> okay. Behold. See, what is Jesus saying to the churches? This is the last letter to the seven churches in Revelation. Eh? When God says, behold, when God says to the prophets, see, he says, give attention, give attention, focus. So when God says focus, it means you have the capacity to see me. If in that same word, other translation says, here I am. Why would God say that if you cannot see him? You can see him. And more and more and more in creation, in relationships, in your time with God, in the word, in supernatural ways, you will be able to see him. Otherwise, it's so unfair that God will say, here I am. Behold, give attention. Are you with me? Okay, but see, behold, let's leave it there for just for now. I stand. Point number two, I stand. Everybody know, I stand at the door and I knock. But the first thing is give attention because you can see me. Behold, give me yours, focus. Focus on me. I stand, where? As you can see me and because you can see me and you can experience me and you can be with me, let me tell you where I am, Jesus says. I stand. In that word, I stand, is God says, I'm ready to be involved with you. You can write that down. I'm ready in this relationship. I'm there. Ek daag op vir die verhouding. I'm here in the relationship. I'm ready to work in you. I'm ready for us to walk together. I'm ready. God, for what are you ready with me? It's not just, I must sort on myself to be ready, but I must found out, find out what is God saying? He's ready to do certain things with me, in me. And to do certain things with me is not just to do the work for the kingdom. It's not just to serve him. But God says, I'm ready to walk with you. That was his desire in the Garden of Eden. I'm ready to walk with you. I'm ready to have a meal with you. I'm ready to commune with you. In the context of this scripture. Let's say God is ready. God is ready to do certain things. So it's not just you waiting on God. It's not just you waiting on God. In your waiting is more a thing of, so that you can understand for what He is ready. He's not purposefully hiding Himself from you in the sense that you will not be able to find Him. No. No, He's so ready. I stand. I stand. The number three, as you all will know, at the door. Hello. I stand at the door. I stand at the door. Now, I don't know how we're going to quickly do this. Ish, 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 ish. We've done this 17 years ago in the church. So I need uh, four guys. There's no space. Four guys. Thank you very much. Um, if you can stand here facing me. Okay. If you can uh, stand facing there. Uh, you. And if you can come here with me and you can come here with me, you too. Uh, yeah, Niku Yewak. You stand behind me. Okay. Now, in your life, Holy Spirit is coming behind you. 
and he's starting to speak to you through circumstance, through situations, that you need Christ. And you point the finger to him. And at the end of the day, Holy Spirit will always show and point to Jesus Christ. Amen. So that when you gave your life to Christ, you meet G Jesus Christ. Is it you? No. It's because of the Holy Spirit that started to speak. And you didn't even realize it's Holy Spirit that started to speak to you. Hello? And you were introduced to him. And then, as he's there, Jesus Christ is there. As you receive me, you become a child of the Father. So here I am, I'm a child of the Father. Hello? And I'm walking with Jesus. Now you come next to me. Hmm. And now we're going to walk together through the, the guidance of the Spirit. Hello? You're walking with Jesus. Is that true? Okay. Now God says, if you want to enter the kingdom, you must enter like a child. Hello? Enter like a child. So there's a door. Now you come and stand in front and you go and stand there. And Jesus said, I will be the door of the sheep. I will be the door of the sheep. So I cannot go through any door. I cannot go through any, oh, well, this is opportunity. This is opportunity. Oh, just in there. This, opportunity. this is excellent. I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do this for God. And this is so excellent opportunity. Nothing bad, nothing naughty. But you need to recognize the one that you're walking with, that is standing in front of you, that he says, walk through me. Walk through me. Walk through me. I am the door of the sheep. Hello? And the Holy Spirit will guide me into a place where I walk through. Because the way to the Father is through the Son. Even when I accepted Him through the Holy Spirit. But also, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And I come into this relationship with the Father. And many times, it's like I'm out here and I'm looking at doors. And, and But Holy Spirit is going to bring me back. He's going to bring me back. He's going to bring me back to enter through Jesus Christ. If you can come to learn Who's Jesus Christ? But you never learned through the word who he is. You will never understand the door. You will never see the door. How many times the door of the sheep will stand in front of you. Opportunity from heaven will stand in front of you. But because you don't know Jesus, you don't realize this is the door. But the door is closed. He's not going to open that door. He's going to walk through the door. Everything is in me, from me, and through me. So if I cannot see who he is, and I'm drawn into him, so that through him I can enter that what God has for my life, man. Are you with me? So I need to see God's will. I need to see his destiny. I need to see his dream. I need to see the breakthrough. Come to know who he is and move through him. Relationship, you will walk with him, yes. But when you stand in that place where you need the breakthrough, you need to know his will, you need to know his dream, you need to know how to go to the next level. He, come, he will come and he stand in front of you. In front of you. Not to confront to you, to block you, but to say, I am the opportunity. I am the way. I am the door. I am your opportunity. Every entrance point, the only entrance point for every heavenly opportunity is me, me, me. But if you cannot see me through my word, me through creation, me through your relationships, me when you look into the mirror, but you just see the mistakes in your life in the name of religion and performance, how on earth will you find God's opportunity? Because he is in the opportunity. There's no opportunity from him. Where he is himself is not in that. Because for every opportunity God has for you, there will be, it will involve more of him, less of you. More of a walk with him. More of intimacy because that's his agenda. So every opportunity he's going to use for his agenda. For his desire. For his heart. Amen. So through the Holy Spirit, that will never leave me, never forsake me. Even if I ignore him, if I, if, I, if, I, if I quench him. I'm walking through him into this place. And you know, then Jesus manifests himself in so many ways <laughs> in my life. Hey, I'm in this place. I'm in this spiritual house even. And then Jesus come there. 
And Jesus, thank you. He creates a door between me and him. And now you can turn around. Jesus, thank you. I knock at this door. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, okay. No, don't hurt him. God creates a door. Why? Well, well, what does God say? He doesn't say, here I am. He says, if you ask, it will be given. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, it will be opened. But then he says, your life is hidden, hidden, hidden in Christ. And he's not going to force a relationship on you. He's not going to force intimacy on you. But he creates the door between you and him. Where you have through a free will, under the guidance of the Spirit, who works in you, the Scripture says, to work in you, to will and to work according to His, for save Elbaha, according to His desire, to His good pleasure. Are you with me? So here He's standing and He has an excitement that you will invite Him into this place, to have fellowship with Him. That's Revelation 3.20. That's where we are at here in this place. So that when he knocks, you will hear the knock. Yes or no? No. If he knocks and you hear his voice. So he wants you to know, you need to know here in this place. You so, as you walk with him, stay there, there. you come to know his voice. Come to know his voice. So that with every opportunity where he is the center of the opportunity, you walk through him because you can see him. But in this place, you need to understand that you are, can hear him. Have you learned how to hear his voice in this place, in walking with him, in walking with him, so that phew, he comes and stand in front of you and you just know, I see Christ in this, so I'm walking into this opportunity because I don't see that feel he says he's okay I can see him in the opportunity then I walk through him in, and in this place he puts a door between me and him so in this place I need to understand how to identify differentiate is that the word his voice from other voices So I'm in this place for intimacy. This is a home that God creates for me with my life, with my family, with even with circumstances where the place where he has put me in with the type of unique calling that he has for me and the fullness of what I call my life, what you call your life and your dreams. In that place, God created this door between you and him for a place of intimacy. And you will recognize his voice if you are walking with him. If you are walking with him. So that through the knock, it's not a door. Here. Thank you. You can just stand like this. Yeah. That there's also other doors, my brother and my sister. And I can hear, thank you, you can turn to me. And I, you can hear many other spirits on that other side calling. But if you just focus on the knock, and God will be knocking. But if you don't come to learn his voice, when you hear the gospel, it will just always be a knocking. You will get so frustrated and irritated with the gospel. You've heard this sermon before. you heard this voice before. You read this verse, but it doesn't really speak to you. Because it's just the knocking. There's just the knocking. The, hello. For the guy in the world that is in the total compromise, he's so irritated when st somebody starts to speak to, about Jesus. And Jesus loves you. No, 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 no. Thank you. There's a knock, but the only thing that I can hear is a knock. And I'm tired of that noise of knocking the whole time. But if I get into a relationship, I will hear a voice on the other side of the knocking. Are you with me? And I will know you walk away from this door because of the voice on the other side. The first, the first real temptation for the next generation. God said to Cain, sin is but crawling, couching, crouching, whatever that word is, at your door. The son lay in lure after the deer. Behind the door. Be careful. Behind the door is sin, is something that's from hell, that is not from me. You don't open that door. 
God says to the firstborn of Adam. God will say that to you. God will say that to me because we are human beings. There's sin. There's weaknesses. There's, there's stuff that is not from Him. And may God help us to see what is behind the door. And the warning from the Holy Spirit. That is, as I'm coming through, there's, there's the thing where, where I will stand at this door and the Holy Spirit that is with me will warn me and say, No, 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 no. That is for your destruction. If you open that door, that is for your destruction. But he will take me into this place. And still I will not understand. Many times. And then you and the Holy Spirit is standing in front of this door. And God is not dealing with it. And he's not busy. Now the agenda is not the opportunity. And the this. this At this stage for this week, God has in one agenda. And that is intimacy with you. To go and sit with him. It's not Martha in the kitchen. That was not from the devil. The kitchen was not from the devil. That had to happen, but at the right time. But this week, you need to be Mary at his feet. And he's not going to bless you in what you're doing in the kitchen, even though you're doing it for him. You're making a meal for him. But it's not under God's guidance, under his blessing, under his hand. And you need to know, when are you in your life in this phase, where he just wants you to open the door and sit with him. With whatever he wants to speak about. Not in the office. But in the place of having a meal with you. To commune with you. To have fellowship with you. If we can understand that different seasons. Because we understand the, they call it the nuances of the spirit. We understand the thoughts, the feelings and the purposes of God. Because that's what... Part of the day with 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16, I think. We have the mind of Christ amplified. We do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes. If the thoughts are in my life, if the thoughts of God is in my life, when he opens his mouth and he's going to speak, it's going to resonate with me. Because his thoughts is already in my heart, in my spirit. So when he speaks, it's resonating with my spirit. It's resonating with my spirit because his thoughts already here. And he, and he voices his thoughts that's in my spirit already. Ah, uh, you still with me? Yeah. No here. But the same. You have already the thoughts of the Juaras and the Mampara Rabish and the bitterness and the unforgiveness and the rejection and the fears. You have the thoughts already here. Yeah, and you keep it there. You're flirting with it. When that other Huara spirits speak to you on the other side of the door. It's, it's recognizable. It's recognizable. You can hear clearly, clearly, clearly the voice of deception, the voice of depression, the voice of temptation, the voice of bitterness, the voice of anger. You can hear it so clearly because you didn't get rid of these thoughts, feelings, and purposes of what Rejection can bring to you. Uh, are you with me? So in this place, see, see, give attention, give attention in this place, give attention. I stand, I'm ready, I'm ready for relationship. I'm ready to have a time with you. I'm ready to do certain things in you, with you, and for you. Give attention, behold, see. I stand, I'm ready, and I knock. If you hear my voice, voice, and you open the door, then you don't have to beg me in prayer. You don't have to plead with me in prayer. You just open the door immediately, without you asking, without you pleading, without you performing, without you to try and do everything right. Because here you are just you. You still have weaknesses, man. Come on. You still have things that are not right in your life. But even though things are not right in your life, you open that door. I will not hesitate. I will come in. And I will come in. And we will sit. That, why, what is it? I will have a focused time with you. I will focus on you. I promise. God says, I will focus on you. I will give you my time. God says. 
and I will commune with you and you with me. What are we talking, the last point then, in that? We will enjoy the same meal. We will enjoy the same food. We will have the same type of joy. We will have the same type of quality. We will eat from the same table. Remember when David said, no, that, thank you. When David said, he can sit at my table. That was the thing about honor. That was the thing about, yo, he sit at the king's table. And God says, I will come and sit at your table. Wow, Lord, what an amazing, 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 amazing privilege. And then if I have the respect, let me make sure that there's not a lot of rubbish on the table. If I know that, he says, it's going to happen. He's going to, sometime, he's going to stand there, he's going to knock to have time with me. Let me prepare my house. Let me prepare my house in such a way that my table is not set ready for when bitter, bitterness come in. Or when I have to take offense again, because that guy did that again. He's react like that again. So I'm ready to give him some rotten food. No, my table is not set for that rubbish. It cannot be anymore. With your expectation, when you fear that certain things will happen again, your fear will set a table in your house so that fear, when fear is knocking on your door, you will surely open and he, fear will sit with you and you will have a meal with fear. And based on fear, you will do the following. One, two, three, four, five. After you've eaten in the name of fear. No, not anymore in Jesus' name. We're going to get this dynamic right in our lives. God, remember, is speaking to the church. I know we use uh, Revelation 3.20 in a context of somebody giving their life to Christ. Also, okay, you need to accept Christ, open your heart, receive Him, and you become a child of God. But, and that, in a certain sense, is good. It's a good picture of, of the principle of, of, of rebirth and giving your life to Christ. But, first of all, Jesus is not speaking to the unsaved. Remember, God is speaking to the church. He's speaking to his end time church in Revelation 3. Are you still here? Are you still here, please? You with me? So my brother and my sister, make sure that you have a respect to receive in these days. More and more is going to happen. More and more is going to happen in a supernatural way. Get ready to receive your master in your house. Because hell is going to be exposed, like we say. We will see more earthquakes. We will see more fear of rumors of wars and wars. And we will see the pestilence and all the things. And all the things must happen, the word says. But at the same time, when hell is more exposed, Jesus wants to expose in the sense of reveal himself in the church. He's not just hell going to be exposed and Jesus is going to do nothing. He's going to reveal himself to his church. So get ready for the knock at the door that you, when it's the knock, that you will not just hear the knock and be irritated with the knock when you hear that sermon or that word or that scripture again. And you get so blasé when we sing that song because you sang that song 45 million times in church. And being in church and sit with God and sit with the word, but it's just, I'm just wara, wara, waraing and I can hear the knock. But I don't hear through that word at all the voice of God. And I never get into a place of opening up. And my God that was so ready tonight, half past nine, to have a time with you. He was so ready standing at the door knocking. But I didn't open. I rather sat there irritated, frustrated, because this scripture didn't make sense even. But maybe to understand how to open the door and hear his voice, I need to pray in tongues a little bit. Or I just need to shut all systems down to come into that place. Are you with me? Oh man, I hope you hear me because this is what God's going to do in his church in this season. And may me and you may not be the foolish virgin, but the wise virgin with the extra oil. And the extra oil has to do with the Holy Spirit, more of the Spirit. Because the Spirit, when the Spirit explains his word for me and he's reminding his word, he's reminding me not that 
like the devil of all the rubbish I did, but he's reminding me of his word and he's explaining his word, bring the excitement in my life about the word, bring the hunger in my life for the word. Because of his work in me, I will have the capacity to hear his voice, to hear his voice on the other side. So I knew if we just make do that prayer to say, Holy Spirit, please, I know you'll never leave me, never forsake me, but please open it up for me so that I will be so sensitive to the voice of my master that when he stands behind a door that he created, not the devil, that God created, because he's not going to force himself on me, but he wants us to have a quality, excellent time, a life hidden, 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 hidden to be revealed. The word that will not make sense, not make sense. The word will be a stumbling block. You put the word here, the written word, the written word. But when the written word becomes the revelational word, the revelational word. You know, that word, God just opened it up for me. What happened? You and God connected through that word. You read the word and that was you came to the door. You realize God is knocking through that scripture. And you took it and said, Holy Spirit, help me. And in that, you and the Holy Spirit opened the door. And it was just a connection. And that word just so made sense. And you could take the word and it brought a change in you with God. Thank you very much. Give him a nice hand. Oh, please. Uh, that's all. If you can remember this. And if you can go and sit with God about this, this type of dynamic, yo, my, my brother, my sister, you can bring a major, a major change in the dynamic of your life, okay? It was behold, just make sure you have that. Behold, that's about to see, give attention. It was about I stand, God says, I'm ready to be involved. I'm ready for the relationship. I'm ready to do. At the door, there's a door. Then the third one, a door that he created. And that has to do with a hidden life. That door is the written word. There's a door. It's this word of God. That's a door that he created. The devil didn't create the word of God. Hello. We all know that. But that word is a door. And when you and the Holy Spirit come to that door, there will be a voice on the other side. There will be a voice on the other side of this word. There will be a voice that is so ready. The God behind the Logos word, because be, behind, uh, on this side of the written word, is so ready to have a relationship with you, to work in you, to work through you, to enjoy you, and for you to enjoy Him. A word, a door that He created. Amen. That's the door. The knock, He's committed. He's committed to you. He will not stop knocking. Praise God for His grace. Through the word of the cross, through His grace, through the blood, He will keep on knocking. He will keep on knocking. If you hear through the Holy Spirit, hear my voice. Is it not in all seven of those letters to the churches? He said, for those who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. For those who has an ear to hear. What does that mean? There are some guys that have no ears. No, they all have yes. But for those who have the capacity, everybody say capacity. For those who have the capacity to hear my voice, hear what I'm saying to the church. And you have the capacity when you understand the door and you understand how you entered with the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit and you have the written word, you have the potential to have this time with God. If you have this capacity, to the Spirit and the Word to hear. I said, if you know my Word, if you know my Spirit, summed up, if you have ears to hear, then hear. Then hear. Do it then. And connect the Word with the Spirit in your heart. And we will have time with one another. And you will know my plans. And you will not go out there just, I will do everything that you said. You will be excited about the plan. You'll be excited about the plan. Tomorrow, in what you do, you'll be excited. Count it all joy when you fall in various trials. You and God had a time, and He's talking to you about some trials that you're going to have, and this and this. Count it all joy. 
because you saw the heart. Count it all joy. When you fall in various trials and, and situations, because you know, because you know, because you know, because you know, what is his purpose? What is his heart for you to be complete, lacking nothing? Three verses further. Lacking nothing to do his will. And wisdom will guide you. Amen. Hear my voice then. That was number to hear my, hear, sorry. To hear is number five. Number six is my voice. Because we can hear a lot. You can hear religion. You can hear a lot. So number four was knock. Number five was hear. Number six was his voice. His voice. Because you started to recognize his voice. And number seven, you open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Because time will not be your excuse. Time will be your opportunity. Make sure that you respect time as an opportunity to open a door. Amen. So that what? So I think the one that really spoke to me was the fact when I just when I read that in my experience, God said, and you will eat from the same food. He will not have his food, I will have my food. I will come in and I will commune with you. Also, some of them all take out. We will eat together. Okay. Okay. The same bowl, the same food. What is he enjoying to eat that you are also going to enjoy to eat? So easily in the, in the past, sorry that we did it dark, that we would enjoy some food that we and the devil can enjoy together. Bitterness, the words that you say that you are comfortable with is the food, it's food for that devil. That demon sitting with you with rejection and uh, pointing a finger to others, he's enjoying, he's eating from the words from your lips. It's food to you. It's food to him, and you can have fellowship together. In the same way. That food is as lacquer to you as that food is to that demon. God must help me. God must help you. Amen. Yeah. That spirit of negativity. That spirit of negativity. That spirit of lust. That spirit of whatever. Compromise. That spirit of, I, of lukewarmness. I mean the whole context of that was just after he said, talked about lukewarmness also. Hey? Are you with me? So... Let me not enjoy the food that the devils enjoy. Yeah. That other scripture where Jesus said, don't have fellowship with demons. You can be a child of God. Hello. You can be a child of God and you can have fellowship with demons. Fellowship with demons as a child of God. Fellowship where you open the door, he come in and you enjoy what that demon enjoy. You enjoy what that devil enjoy. And you have a meal together in the name of talking to one another about what this government is doing, what this government isn't doing, and blah, 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 or gossiping about that man. Or and you're enjoying the feast together, eating from the same bowl, eating from the same table. No, it's not going to happen like that anymore in Jesus' name. Well, these friends of yours, you will have this type. You will see that in your life. If you want to know if, you, if you're eating with devils and you're eating with God, just look at when you are with these friends. Oh, you can swear, you can do this, you can do that. When you're with these friends, these friends, you can do that. As an adulterer, you go. You live. Flirt and have intimacy with these guys in this way. You will see it when you are, have that type of thing. With these friends, you are like this. With those friends, you are like this. With that friend. And you say, no, I have freedom to be more like this. Be more myself. You have freedom to be more fake. I'm not saying you must speak to everybody about the innermost being of... of I'm talk, not talking about that trust relationship about discipleship. I'm not talking about that. I think you know what I'm saying. 
But when you have that type of relationships around you, just know that you know that you know you see in the reality what's happening in the spirit. You have fellowship with demons. You open the door for them when you hear their voice, not just the knock, when you hear their voice saying, yeah, they are doing that again. Yeah, they are doing that again to you. And you recognize that voice of rejection. You open the door, let him come in, and let us eat together from the same bowl, from the same table. <sighs> when you're with people, or when you're alone, that when you're alone, you will allow yourself to do certain things. But you've opened the door, that when you're alone, it's okay to open the door for a certain voice to come in. And you and that devils have fellowship. God must help you, God must help me. Yes. And we we need to deal with this because in the end time, the, 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 the devils, the devils, the, 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 uh, that's another day, but that's a sermon that you don't easily do. But the rankings talk about our warfare is not against flesh, not against a human being, but against principalities, princes, demons, there's rankings. Hello? And more and more in the end time, it's not just devils that will come. But like more and more warring angels will come with certain mandates, with certain authority. More and more demonic forces with higher ranking will manifest itself. So in these days, let's rise with stature. Let's rise with stature. Because in that day, God wants to brag about Himself in you. He wants to brag about the authority of His Word. Brag about the authority of His name that you're going to use when you are still walking in stature. You want to brag about Himself when the principalities and all that other chachas are released more and more from hell. He wants to brag about His superiority that there is no other God. Yes. How many times did God say that to Israel? I will do this and even in the nations and they will acknowledge that there is not such a God like me. Many, many times God said that through the prophets. When he even brought judgment over other nations. That that is the thing. They will recognize that there is no other God like me. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, come and guide us, please. Oh God, thank you for your mercy. That through your grace, through your love, you came. You came through your Spirit. And that through your Spirit, you brought me into that place of meeting my Savior. Surrendering myself. To understand how I've been crucified with Christ, died with Him, buried, raised with Him, reigned with Him in heavenly places. But God help us to understand where to see every man, woman in this place. Not to see very nice opportunities, godly visions, but to see you as the door of the sheep and that we will walk through you as the door, Lord. For many times to be Martha, many times to be Mary, in us to help us to know when are you with us in the kitchen and when are you with us where we just need to sit at your feet be quiet and hear what you want to say and how you want to share your heart with us uh, God come and teach us that dynamic to enjoy life and in the diversity of of richness of of life with you not a boring Christian lifestyle not a boring just reciting certain things in our head even in prayer or when we hear the word but that God we say we turn our back on religion today the system of religion but we choose today for stature in relationship stature in relationship thank you for that father that you touch every man every woman in this place so that we will really understand to see what you are saying because you can we can hear your heart in what you are saying we hear your heart in what you are saying, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord, and that we can walk in that level of intimacy. Yes. Come and do that, Lord, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.